Before we begin today's video, I would like to give a shout out to one of our newest subscribers, Kim Anas. Thank you for subscribing, and welcome to the family. This video is thanks to viewers like you. And if you request from Nigel Election for this particular character, if you would like to see a character in one of these videos, let me know who that character is in the comment section below and what franchise they are from. I will admit this one was a little difficult to put together, but I hope you enjoy this build, Nigel. And now on with today's video. Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back once again to Dungeons & Dragons Character Conversion. We take a look at characters from across media and bring them into Dungeons & Dragons using their lore to create a playable character. And today is Richard Sharp from the, well, the Sharp series. Sharp's Rival, Sharp's Gold, Sharp's Triumph. He is a British soldier. So we need to figure out what we're doing with this book character who did get some movie adaptations. So let's go ahead and get started with our stats using the point by system. Strength will be a 10, Dexterity will be a 14, Constitution will be a 14, Intelligence will be a 12, Wisdom will be 13, and Charisma will be 10. For our race, we are going with Human, and we're going to grab the Variant Human. This is because we want to grab that extra skill which is going to be acrobatics and a free feat which is going to be gunner he is a soldier after all so we do need to know how to use firearms which thankfully the gunner feat gives us proficiency in firearms we get to ignore the loading property of firearms and being within five feet of a hostile creature doesn't impose disadvantage on range attack rolls We'll increase our dexterity by two points in total, thanks to our gunner feat and the ability score increase from being a human variant. And we'll go ahead and increase wisdom by one point, making it 14. Like I said, we are a British soldier, so we are going to need the soldier background. More specifically, Richard Sharp took battle in... The Battle of Waterloo, law, as well as a couple of other famous wars. The soldier background gives us proficiency in athletics and intimidation, as well as one gaming set of our choice and land vehicles. We also get the feature of military rank. If you are looking for a generic soldier character, I do recommend my character concept video about the U.S. Army's different branches of military. But we are focusing on Richard Sharp, not just a generic soldier. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what exactly we are looking at here, starting things off with the fighter class at first level we get a d10 hit die starting hit points of 10 plus our constitution modifier which is a plus two as of right now we also get extra hit points for each level of fighter that we get after the first equal to 1d10 plus our constitution modifier for our proficiencies we are proficient in all armor and shields simple and martial weapons Saving throws are going to be strength and constitution, and we get two skill proficiencies. We're going to go with history and survival, as that is what Richard Sharp is good at. He is good with history, and since he's a soldier, he knows his way around the battlefield and how to survive. For our fighting style, 
Now, this one was a little bit difficult to get because I wanted to find something that made sense for Richard. So I needed to look at the weaponry that was available for the British Army back in the day. Which happened to be these type of sabers known as light cavalry sabers. Now they did have access to heavy cavalry as well, but Richard Sharp seems to primarily use these light cavalry. Which unfortunately, uh doesn't really help us with the build, but a lot of times we do see Richard Perry attacks from other saber wielders. So the fighting style of superior technique will do just fine, giving us a maneuver from the Battlemaster subclass of fighter. So we'll go with Perry, since we are parrying away attacks from other sword fighters. We also get the feature Second Wind. At level 2 fighter, we are going with Action Surge. For our third level fighter, we need a Martial Archetype. Now, I really had trouble figuring this one out, as we did have a lot to go off of for Richard Sharp. I was torn between three different martial archetypes, the Battlemaster, the Banneret, and the Cavalier. I ended up going with the Banneret simply for, because of the fact that Banerets inspire greatness in others by committing brave deeds in battle, which Richard Sharp has done. The mere presence of one in a helmet is enough to cause some orcs and bandits to seek easier prey. A lone Banneret is a skilled warrior, but a Banneret leading a band of allies, such as a colonel of an army, which Richard Sharp did become later on in his life, even most poorly equipped militia into ferocious warband, which he actually does do. He is able to help a village defend itself. Not that well, but when it came to it, the village did run away when it became necessary. But they did take out a large number of enemy forces while they were at it. The Banneret gets a feature known as Rallying Cry, which allows you to give temporary hit points to one of your allies. For our fighter level 4, we would go with an ability score improvement, but I wanted to go with the Tough Feet, simply because Richard Sharp has been through a lot during his years. I mean, just look at this list of battle scars that he has gotten. I mean, holy cow, dude. You should be dead. How are you not dead after all this? I mean, just the fact that he was able to take a wound to the scalp from a musket ball is impressive enough. But a wound in his back from shattered glass probably near... Eh, Minor saber wound, getting a saber wound to the... How is this guy still alive throughout all this? Shot with a horse pistol loaded with three bullets, which broke his shoulder, thigh, and tore off the top of one ear. How? The tough feet fits. Moving on to level 5 fighter, we get our extra attack feature. Level 6 fighter gets an ability score improvement. Go ahead and increase your dexterity by 2 points, making it an 18. Fighter level 5 gets Royal Envoy, which definitely fits with Richard Sharp's character. We get proficiency in the perception skill, and we double our proficiency bonus for ability checks made to use Persuasion. Very nice. Moving on to level 8 fighter, go ahead and increase your intelligence to a 14. He has battlefield prowess. He is very intelligent. So, yeah, making him a higher intelligence is going to be necessary. 
At level 9, we get the Indomitable feature. Level 10, we get Inspiring Surge. Level 11, we get Extra Attack for a second time. So we now get to use Extra Attack for a total of 3 attacks per attack action instead of just 2. This is only with the fighter. If we were to multi-class and get extra attack that way, it would not work. It says so in the Dungeon Master's Guide and the Player's Handbook. Moving on to level 12 fighter. Go ahead and increase your charisma by two points. Since we have access to persuasion, we are going to need a better way to persuade not only our allies, but our opponents. Moving on to level 13, we now have two uses of the Indomitable feature. Moving on to level 14, we would get an ability score in priest, but I want a feat. Martial Adept will go for two maneuvers, the commanding presence, and tactical assessment. Both are features that I think would fit perfectly with Richard Sharp. Moving on to level 15, we get the feature of Bulwark which is definitely very useful. It allows you to give the benefits of your Indomitable to one of your allies. Moving on to level 16, another ability score increase. Go ahead and increase your charisma by two points, making it a 14. Moving on to level 17, Fighter. We get two uses of Action Surge and three uses of Indomitable now. <coughs> Pardon. Moving on to level 18, we now get to target two allies with Inspiring Surge. Level 19, we would get an ability score improvement here, but I wanted Inspiring Leader for a feat. Since we have the prerequisite of a 13 or higher charisma, we now have the ability to give a 10-minute speech to inspire our companions, giving them temporary hit points equal to our level plus our charisma modifier. And finally, level 20, extra attack 3. Now, for each attack action, we get to make 4 attacks instead of just 1. And this is actually the first time in ever that I've only had to use one class for a character build. I'm honestly surprised, but it does fit Richard Sharp better to just go with the one class than to attempt a multi-class. Now, I could see an argument for him being partially paladin, especially Oath of the Crown, especially in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, where it is possible to get powers by being faithful to a cause. But since we are talking about someone from the real world being transferred into Dungeons and Dragons, well, not entirely the real world, Richard Sharp, I don't think is a real character. I think he's just fictional. But in either case, I do hope that you enjoyed today's build. Like I said, if you would like to see a character in Dungeons and Dragons for your purposes, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I don't know why I messed that up. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed, and until next time, this has been Drehan, and I am offline.